States. All of this has had the effect of moving our country onto the abyss of fascism and authoritarianism in a way that does not reflect the national divide of our people, which is probably 60-40 or 70-30, toward more normal centrist policies at the very least. This is what Trump opened the door to. If you had not had Trump in 2016 elected, let's say you had Jeb Bush or, uh, or Rubio, we may not like their policies, but we would be living in a different world. So you were asking me what a second term would be like. This is what he was able to do with one term. Now, if he came into another term, this would be additionally fueled by vengeance, and he's surrounded by more strange extremists than he ever was in 2017. So, uh, Congressman uh, Michael very uh, uh, adeptly put out, laid out what what Donald Trump has exposed us to over the last four years and, and continuing. Let's talk about what uh, Speaker McCarthy has exposed us to in giving Tucker Carlson uh, those uh, January 6th uh, footage. He said that he start, start airing that uh, footage uh, with, um, uh, I guess, his caucus or his team uh, this week. Are you worried uh, that that will present a distorted negative uh, image of what happened on that day, giving more fuel and fire to the insurrectionists? Well, let's think about who he gave them to. He gave it to not just Fox News, which we have seen in the last couple of weeks, is riddled with lies. Individuals who are willing to put themselves and their ratings over the truth each and every time. Um, they have said internally that they know that they were lying, that they know that the election um, was, was not rigged, that Biden was, in fact, the president, but they were willing to put forward a lie. And this is the person, Tucker Carlson, that the Speaker of the House gives sensitive documents to. Not only are we concerned with misinformation, sensitive information being put out, but if McCarthy is so concerned about protecting the blue, he's also putting police officers, Capitol Police officers, good men and women, in danger by exposing who they are and the things that they did to protect the Capitol and to protect not just members of Congress, but so many incredible staff and individuals that work in that complex as well. So, Michael, it, it, from a historic or historian's perspective, what we're about to witness is Trump, with Trump is something unprecedented. He's still facing multiple investigations uh, as this 2024 race gets underway. So how do you think um, this plays into the narrative of his uh, efforts to become not just the nominee, but the next president of the United States with all of this legal baggage hanging over his head? We haven't seen anything like this in history before. No, we have not. We haven't seen a president potentially indicted like this and maybe dealing with serious multiple indictments from various places, uh, various uh, judicial agencies. So that's something we haven't seen before. And even Donald Trump, who has the survival abilities of a cockroach, I'm not sure if he can withstand uh, if he is potentially indicted, and we don't know that this is going to happen, but let's say in three different venues at the same time, you know, that's a lot to ask of anyone, including someone who uh, is in his late 70s and may not be the most physically fit person uh, of that age that I have ever seen. So you've got that. But the even more dangerous thing, Stacey and Michael, is that, you know, people who try to get a nomination in parties you know, do it by trying to appeal to what they think will work. Well, look what Rick DeSantis has done in Florida. He was known as sort of a nondescript uh, political leader, member of Congress. Suddenly, he really has tried to turn himself into sort of a local Mussolini in Florida with the book banding and the br brutal tactics. And even this week, this suggestion that bloggers have to register with the state for the honor of writing about the governor and other, other political leaders. We have to call this what this is. This is fascism and authoritarianism that goes even beyond what Trump has talked about. That's what he thinks is going to work in that party. And in a way, that's the scariest thing of all.
I find it ironic, Congresswoman, based on uh, certainly given what Michael just said about what's happening in Florida, that there the governor wants to use the government, the government to weaponize against bloggers and others. Uh, you are on the weaponization subcommittee. Those hearings began this week. Uh, Chairman Jim Jordan is boasting of FBI whistleblowers and all kinds of nefarious things going on. But the, the first few witnesses that have come forward um, with uh, so far with like firsthand knowledge haven't really had firsthand knowledge of any wrongdoing. What, what does this do to the credibility of this committee and the witnesses and the overall process? Well, I think it's a waste of taxpayer dollars, right, for the, the kind of information that they're attempting to put out. Let's get that out there, first of all. Uh, a group, the GOP, that says seem to be so concerned with wastefulness and, uh, you know, saving taxpayer money, they're the ones wasting money on individuals who are not whistleblowers. They do not meet the legal definition of whistleblowers. And never mind the legal definition, these are merely disgruntled FBI workers who are giving us stories that they have heard are not factually uh, correct. Uh, they, you know, for example, one of them says that uh, the SWAT team went after an individual and he was opposed to them using a SWAT team. Yeah, you're opposed to them using a SWAT team against an individual who's known to carry AK-15s, who is armed and dangerous. Of course, there's a SWAT team can be used for that. None of them have any protections under any federal statute or any federal whistleblower group. And what's even more sinister, uh, Michaels, <laughs> the Michaels, is that <laughs> these individuals, you can trace their financing back to individuals like Cash Patel, Mark Meadows, who have real interest in ensuring that they are protected and their actions during January 6th, as well as going forward, are protected and they're insulated from criminal um, charges themselves. That's, uh, you know, it's, it's shameful that Jim Jordan is using committee time on this when there are real things that we can be looking at. Why don't we look at Bill Barr and how he weaponized the federal government when he was the, at the head of DOJ? Why don't we look at individuals, special agents, FBI special agents that have recently come to light that were using the FBI for conservative movements? How about the IRS disproportionately auditing African-American families, working class families. Those are things that we can look at, but those are not of any interest uh, to Jim Jordan, Kevin McCarthy, and the crew.